This is one of those videos where I have to remember to actually say something out loud. So, let's get into it. Hi, I'm Brian from Airflow Music. Welcome back to another video. This is the October 20th edition of our Go Practice Daily series. I hope you're having a great day today. There was something in the comments after the video the other day when I was playing the five bar tanging exercise where someone was reporting that they'd played the exercise for a few days and were getting bad blistering on their lips and what to do about that. Now, my advice, as I said to them in the comment response, was that I can't say for sure because I don't see them play it, but most probably they're just generally pressing too hard on their lips. But this actually speaks to a bigger problem and it's something we all need to pay attention to and address. What that is particularly is the acceptable level of pain that goes into practicing and playing the trumpet. And from my point of view, the acceptable level of pain is no pain. Zero, nothing. This should not hurt us. So, in a situation like that, if you've been playing one of my exercises and it hurts you, don't do it, okay? By all means, ask for guidance on what you might need to do to improve it so it doesn't hurt, but if it hurts, don't do it. Okay, that's important because we seem to have this impression that there's an acceptable level of pain that goes into playing. That it's okay that it should hurt and there's all kinds of products on the market that help us mitigate the fact that it hurts us when we play and we cut our lips or our lips get swollen and all that kind of stuff. And while those products are mostly very effective and very good, it doesn't speak to the bigger problem which is that it shouldn't do that. And if that is happening to you and you get real swollen enough that you cut yourself or you need a cream to help swelling go down or something like that, then there's actually something about your playing that you need to fix and you need to be more efficient with because that is not how it's supposed to be. Yes, I get it. We're totally doing something unnatural. We're pressing metal against flesh and blowing air through tubes and all that kind of stuff. And there will be all these excuses that people will come up with about why there's some kind of acceptable level of pain. But I repeat, this thing shouldn't hurt. We can maybe get into a position where we can think that's acceptable at the end of the fourth set on a long gig or something like that. And for sure, unless we're all super efficient, that is likely to be a little painful by that point. But that's the only time at which at least it is understandable. But if you're in that position and you are hurting yourself to play, then you're not doing something quite right because that is not how it's supposed to be. And I wanted to make sure that I said that out loud. Now, with that rant being over, I'm going to go through the five bow tonguing exercise once again, similar to what I did the other day. But I was thinking about that and looking back at what I was doing and I was setting a bad example, which is that I wasn't taking my break in part two of the exercise as early as I should have done. So we're going to play that exercise again one more time today, I'm going to go through it once again and we'll talk more about part two when we get there. Let's deal with part one first. This is the same thing we've been doing with this. This is going to be one bar of eighth notes, one bar of triplets, one bar of sixteenth notes, a one bar hold followed by a one bar rest. That is our five bar rhythmic pattern. And in part one, we're going to repeat that for the pitches low C, chromatically down to low F sharp. As I did the other day, this is from my practice. So I am going to go at 120 beats a minute because that's where I'm playing it right now. You can grab the PDF from the Airflow Music Online Store. It's free if you want to follow along with your own metronome at your own tempo but that's what I'm dealing with, okay? So let's get into playing part one. Thank you. 
Okay, part one, solid, fine. Maybe not as clean as it could be on a couple of notes here and there, but generally that was okay. And this is really about getting in the groove for this exercise. I'm still working out my tonguing. Playing it every day is improving matters. There's still some work to be done. But that's okay. I'm also going quite fast, so sometimes my tongue gets a little stuttery on it. And that's why I'm working out at that tempo, so I can get that cleaned up. Anyway, moving on to part two. This is the version where we start on low C and go chromatically up to high C, covering two octaves. And because I was so keen on getting to that high C, keeping the mouthpiece on my lips throughout the entire thing and not breaking that setting, I was thinking about it, setting a bad example and pushing a little harder and going through a couple of things where ideally it would have been the point to take my break because I was pushing a little bit too hard pressing a little bit too hard on my lips, manipulating a little bit too much to kind of force it out. And that is not ultimately what we need to be practicing in these things. The goal of this for any of you playing along with me here should not be to attempt to match me on this, or at least not at the point of forcing through some stuff to do that. All right? What I probably haven't said out loud again often enough on these is this particular exercise is something I played pretty much every day for about five or six years at one time in my life. It was about 15 years ago, but nonetheless, it was something I played a lot all the time. And so as I work through this now, this is really a refresher course on it for me. So my progress through it and the way it's built up for me has been quite quick because my body vaguely remembers what it needs to do. It's just that I'm getting the refresher on it now and now I'm coming back to it so it goes, oh yeah, I remember what that is, we're good, we can do it, okay? But if you haven't had the same training with it, that's probably not gonna be the case for you. And that's as it should be, okay? So don't push through this and force through this to try and go, well, Brian played it on the video, we should be able to play along with this, okay? I have played this thing over a thousand times. My body remembers it pretty well. So, the way we should be approaching this is as we come up, we break the setting once we really start to force, press, manipulate, or the sound really changes as we come up in these articulations, okay? So, that could be if the note airs out and it really doesn't speak when we start on a particular pitch, or something like that because we're kind of working hard. All right, so that's what I'm gonna be listening for as I play it this time, and I'm gonna be much more fastidious about stopping at that point, even though I may not make it up to the high C in the one setting, and indeed may not make it nearly as far as that. I don't know, we'll find out, okay? But we'll find out together. All right, so this is the stuff that I want you to watch out for when you're practicing this. And if you're practicing this and you're really beating yourself up, you're not stopping nearly early enough. And so don't try and match me. If you're playing along with me right now as we do this, then as soon as you get to that point, wherever it is, even if it's after three or four pitches, pause the video, take your break, and then continue on from the last one that you were able to play and go up again as high as you can. But if that's only another few notes, that's exactly as it should be, okay? because the purpose of this is to build up in time to have the sort of chops that let you play that two octave long setting without hurting yourself. Okay, that's what I want to say. It's gotten a little bit ranty again. I'm sorry about that, but that's what it is. Anyway, let's play part two from low C chromatically up to high C in as long a setting as I can manage and we'll see how we get on. All right.
So that F sharp just didn't speak. Okay, that note did not speak for me. I aired out on that because I was pressing a little bit, and so it was obvious to everybody, so that's why I stopped there. Now I'm taking my 15, 20 second break, then I'm gonna continue. So there was a case in point with part two. The F sharp at the top of the staff there aired out on me. I was pressing to get there, so I actually paid attention to the warning signs that were up in front of me, and I stopped. And therefore, when I started again from the F sharp, I got all the way up to the high C, much easier than I've been playing it, and the sound was improved up there, and everything was much freer. That is the sort of way that you need to play these exercises. If you're forcing stuff out to make it happen, then you're just training yourself with bad habits. So that was the point of all the various rants in this video. That's what I wanna try and bring home to you because I really think it's important and I really think it's something that holds everybody up. But I'm not gonna harp on it any longer. Let's keep moving forward with this. So as we know, after we've played part two, what we need to do is play the cool down, which is part three or a repeat of part one. So let's get into doing that. Once again, we start back on low C and now we go chromatically downwards, back to the low F sharp, just to reset everything a little bit and get everything calmed down. So if we did press at all or really feel worked out by playing part two, this will help mitigate some of that and get us feeling much fresher so we don't feel beat up. With part three done, I feel much, I feel absolutely fresh now rather than just much fresher. I felt pretty good getting through part two, but now I'm blank canvas once again. I feel good, everything will be great for my gigs and things later today. So, as much as I've gotten into a whole rant in this video, I apologize for that, but that's how important I think this stuff is. So if you have any questions or comments about that, please do leave them down below usual comment rules apply. Let's keep it respectful and let's keep it pleasant and I'll be more than happy to answer it. Okay? So let's just be mindful of our manners as we post on these kind of things. Anyway, that's what I have for you in this one. I hope it's been helpful, not too unpleasant as I rant away and maybe even somewhat enjoyable. If it has been, please do hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll be back with another video tomorrow. And until then, 
Thanks very much for watching and go practice.